In part two of looking at source nodes, we're going to focus more on some of the technical sides of how the source nodes function, as well as focusing a lot more on how creative you can be with the source node tools. So to start off, we've got a couple images that we're going to have a look at. The first thing is I've got a single image here on top of a background. This image is in fact the same background, and if I move it around, you can see simply what I've done is I've taken the eye of the background, I've rotoscoped it out, and then from that rotoscope, I've simply color corrected it and blurred it out. Nothing too complicated, but I just want to give an example of how source notes could be used in a creative type of way. Now what we want to do is another media entry I have is this simple white star. Now I would like to take this white star and combine it with the rotoscoped eye that I've already created. Now I don't want to change the mat, I want to add this into the front or the fill of the eye. So to get to the eyes media, we simply can either just hold down Alt and click the media entry, which then highlights it in the media list. Or if you're doing it manually, just read the number in the bracket, which is number one, and select number one in the media entry list. To bring out the front of this, we're going to go ahead, make sure the media is selected in the media list, and pull out the front source from the action node bin. You can see currently, that the front source has just got the eye with the color correction already applied. If you think about it, if I was just to rearrange the nodes like this, there is actually a definite pipeline from the media in the media list being fed into the front source, and then the result of the front source then gets fed into the surface, which is what we have in the main action composite. So to combine the front of the original image plus the front of this star into the scene, we simply create a connection, we drag the two together. Now, initially when you look at this, this is not the result that we expect to see, because I expect to see the star composited on top of the eye, but the eye is missing. To see what's going on inside the source node, we select the source node, and then we change to the source view. Currently, you can see if I turn the icons on, we've just simply got the star, and then the eye is sitting behind the star. The reason for this is that whether you're working with a front source or a mat source, their default behavior is to work either with the mats only or to work with the fronts only. The way you determine what images you're working with is determined by what the lettering is next to the brackets of the images. So for example, you can see that the star that I have here, it's coming off media entry number two, which is this in the media list, and then it has the letters FW. This stands for front white, which means the mat is actually being fed through as white instead of the original mat. If I wanted to change the settings, so for example, I would like the front and the mat of this star to be injected into the front source node, we simply go to the media settings of this image. So we select the image tabs here, and then go to the source options. The sources options only becomes available when an image is connected into a source node. You can see, as I mentioned, the default behavior is only feed the front of an image into the front source. If you change this to custom, you can say, right, I would like the front to be the front, and instead of the mat being filled with white, I would like to use the mat of this image. As soon as I do this, and now we return back to the source node, you can see how even though I'm working in a front source, so effectively I'm replacing the front, I'm also feeding the mat of my new image into that front as well. So you can see how I can now combine all these images together with their fronts and their mats inside the source node. Now let's position it here and we'll just make it slightly smaller and I'll just position it over the pupil of the eye. Another thing to take into account is you can see that the eye has been color corrected and it's also been blurred. But if you have a look at what's going on, you'll notice that there is a color correction on the eye and then the blur is happening to both the objects. So what's going on in here is that we have color correction happening before the source node and then the blur operation is happening to the result of the source node. So there is actually a pipeline where this is being applied. The color correction as well as the blur are coming from the media list. So in the media list, the eye was originally blurred and then it was color corrected as well. To control the pipeline of how the effects are applied in the scene is if we select the front source node and go to the source menu. In the source menu, you have an option called post. Post basically means whether or not the effects happen after or before the source node. 
So you can see that the color correction, when the tab is disabled, the color correction happens to the original image before it gets injected into the source node. If I turn color correction on, the color correction is now happening after the source node. You'll see that the eye is now back to its original color, but the star has also got the color correction as well. So you can change and adjust the different settings that you have inside the source node so that you can get the exact type of look that you like just by manipulating the different settings that you have here. So hopefully this gives you a little bit more of an insight into some of the technical details. Remember, you can choose whether you want to have the front with a white mat going into a source node or you can customize the image to have the front and the mat of that same source being fed directly into the source node, which gives us this result like here. Now let's have a look at something a little bit more creative. So I'm going to load this setup over here. Inside this setup, I've already done a four point track of a background onto a TV screen. What we'd like to do here is we want to take all the different elements that I've got here in the media list and add them into my scene to create a moving motion graphics composite with inside the TV screen. Now normally when doing a four point track, you may think to yourself that if there's any animation or motion graphics or composites that happen inside the TV screen or on the billboard, you may want to go ahead and create this first, render it out and then add it into the TV screen afterwards. This can be done, however, it takes a few more steps and a little bit more rendering time. When using the source nodes, you can combine this all together in one action composite and keeping the most flexibility possible, which means if there's a last minute adjustment, you don't have to go ahead and re-render your backgrounds and your motion graphics before recomping this again. So what you're going to go ahead and do is we're going to take the background that we already have and I'm going to select it in the media list. So using the alt click, I can then take this entry and make sure it is the correct one that I have selected. From here, we will now pull a front source node out into the composite. The front source is going to be the main pre-composite where all the images are going to be added into my scene. In order to do this, we'll now go ahead and start bringing in the different elements. So first off, we're going to start off with some text and this one says Super Bowls. Now we'll add this first into the main composite as a straightforward image. This is the first layer that we're going to be using. The second thing that we'll add in is we've got some flames as well. So we'll take these flames and we'll also add this into the scene as an image source. We can then take these and let's say if I want to reorder them, we can simply reorder them using the priority editor. This will then rearrange the text on top of the flames and then to group them together as a single object, we will bring out another axis from the action node bin and simply by holding down shift and kissing the nodes, you can see that I've made a grouped object that can then be moved around. To add this into the source node or my pre-composite, once again, if you remember, we drag a connection from the source node and connect it to this axis. It then gets inserted into the scene. As in the previous example, you can see that the front that is being fed into the front source is defined to be front as the front and the white or is equal to the mat. So we just need to change this. So if you just select the surface, make sure it is coming here. You then go to your image menu and then under sources, you change it from front only to custom and then we choose the mat. This then allows it to be correctly composited inside the scene. From here, we can just simply scale it down and match it into the TV screen. Remember, I can view this in context as well as out of context. So if I select the source node, we go over to the source view. You can then see how the logo is being applied in the scene and we can then move it around. One of the other things that you need to take into consideration is the layer priority, which I mentioned earlier. So if you have an object selected in the main composite, so we've actually selected this overall image that's got the four point track on it. If I swipe down and bring the layer priority list up, I've got all the objects that are inside the main composite. These are all the layers that we have available. If I select the source node, you can see that the layer priority list changes to show me the layers inside the source node. So depending which one you have selected will show you the different layers. This is a step that can be easily mistaken and it's worth pointing this out at this point. So let's go back to the source node and let's just jump back in there. So we're going to take what we have inside the source node. And I'm going to take the grouped axis and we'll just reposition it a little bit further up in the scene. What we'll also go ahead and do is we'll take another layer 
and we'll add this into the scene as well. So we'll take this collect them all graphic and with the source node up, if I just drag this in, it instantly gets applied into my source node and from there we can go ahead and reposition it inside the scene so that it looks as it does in the composite. Lastly, what we may want to do to make this work for us is we want to go ahead and maybe add a light into the scene. So if I take a light and I throw this into the composite, you can see how it's now relighting my scene and I'm just going to move it a little bit back in Z space. Now one thing to point out is that inside the master scene you will see that there is already a light being applied. So if we were to take this light and move it around, this light is actually controlling the highlights on the TV screen. But I'd also maybe like to have a highlight going across the top of the Super Bowls text. So with the light already inside the source node, we can create that type of effect. So let's take the Super Bowls image that we have and I'm going to turn on Shining. You can see straight away that if we look into the source node composite, the light that we now have is now creating that highlight effect. So if I was to do any animation with this, say for example we move this up just a little bit higher and we'll start off maybe at this point and then say towards the end of the composition I'd like the light to move across the Super Bowl's text. That looks great and then maybe just in the middle we'll go ahead and lift the light slightly up so that it's not uh, overpowering the Super Bowl text. You can now see how just by using a light inside the source node I've created that highlight pass as well as the light outside the main composite is creating that reflective pass and as the surface moves inside of 3D space you can see how that light is now reacting naturally with the TV screen as if it was composited in. Maybe just to finish up this composite, maybe add a bit of grain on top of the lens or maybe do a bit more work on the shading side. But hopefully this kind of gives you the example of how you can use the source node in this way. One final quick example is this. Here we have got a simple surface. The image was painted inside the paint tool and I'm going to create a very quick flare. To do this, we're going to use the source nodes. Firstly, let's just take our surface and just change the blending mode to simple additive. This will make a nice reaction to the background that it is sitting on top of. The next thing to do is to take this media and bring out the front source. From the front source, if I just grab the axis and start rotating it, you can see very quickly how I've now created a nice random looking flare and depending on the type of paint stroke I might use I'd get very different examples. It's just something if you need to create some type of flashy graphics very quickly the source notes can actually be used in multiple different ways to give us these different types of results. If you want to know any more information about Autodesk Smoke or you'd like to download the free 30-day trial copy just go to autodesk.com forward slash smoke for Mac.